Hi folks, in this video we're going to be talking about Trellis. Now Trellis is built on top of Ansible. Ansible uses playbooks and those playbooks are what allow us to uh, provision our server with specific server settings. In this case, we're focusing on WordPress and our LEMP stack. Along with Trellis, we're going to get Ubuntu installed, Nginx, PHP, MariaDB, uh, SSL support, Composer, WPCLI, SMTP, uh, mail delivery, mail hog, memcache, fail to ban, and firm all installed on a virtual box within our local development machine. So what this means is no longer do we need to use things like MAMP. Uh, instead, what we use is VirtualBox and Vagrant through the use of Trellis and these Ansible playbooks to provision uh, a local dev environment server. The reason why we want to do this is so that if we're working uh, as a team specifically and there's multiple people in multiple environments, you want to make sure that developer A has the exact same server settings as developer B. Uh, otherwise, we could run into some potential conflicts uh, when we go to deploy our code. So with all that being said, Ansible, uh, Trellis in general, uh, doing development in this perfect parity so that you know that your local development changes when you deploy them to the staging are going to just work with pretty good certainty because the server settings are exactly the same. So without further ado, I'm going to dive into getting Trellis set up. We're going to install Bedrock. Bedrock, as discussed in the introduction video, is going to allow us to kind of reorganize the way that WordPress normally houses its, its files. It's also going, going to allow us to use Composer, and Composer is going to allow us to, instead of you know, kind of grabbing and, and installing manually certain dependencies, it's going to allow us to do that in a much more uh, controlled manner. So along with that, we're also going to eventually be talking about Sage, uh, which is the starter theme for WordPress that I highly recommend using within this suite of Roots uh, products here. And in this video, though, we're, we're mainly focusing on getting Trellis installed, which again requires Ansible, Vagrant, and VirtualBox. So let's dive right in. Scrolling down, we have all of those things that we uh, just mentioned previously, and then we have our requirements. So the first thing you want to make sure that you do is you install Ansible. Just click that link. It's going to take you over to this URL here where you just simply run these commands. And there we go. You can see I already have um, easy install uh, via pip already installed on my machine. So it's finished that process pretty quickly. Either way, it's a pretty quick process to run through. Same thing with Ansible. I already have it installed. It's just going to basically check to see if I have all of the uh, dependencies required for the specific version of Ansible installed on my local machine. I do, so we get through that process pretty quick. What I do want to mention, if I jump back quickly over here, is that pay very close attention to these specific version numbers that you need to have a greater than or equal to version of. I currently have Ansible 2.3 running and have tested this already and it does indeed work. Just make sure you have the correct versions of these or you definitely will run into problems. When we first started using Trellis, we ran into a number of problems and it almost always boiled down to us either installing something the wrong way or just using the wrong version. So uh, definitely make sure that you're paying close attention to the versions. So Ansible, same thing with VirtualBox, you're just clicking on each of these links here and you're downloading the VirtualBox installer. Installing it on your local machine and you should be good to go. Same thing with Vagrant, cl clicking this link, finding the file that's applicable to you, downloading that file, and then simply installing that. Next up, we have Vagrant Bind FS. Uh, if you're a Windows user, you can skip this. And if you're a Windows user in general, what I'm going to do is record a separate video just for Windows because there are some pretty specific nuances to Windows um, that you would have to be aware of in order to actually get this to work properly. Vagrant host manager, again, just clicking this, running through this simple GitHub article here uh, and installing via uh, this simple command. We'll get you up and running. Once you have all of these installed, and there definitely could be some complication along uh, with installing these versions, uh, whether you're doing it through NPM or you're using a homebrew, sometimes that can lead to some issues. If you run into any issues at all along the way of getting this uh, set up, what I'd highly rec recommend you doing is jumping over to discourse.roots.io and just jumping in there, creating an account, and getting involved uh, in the community a bit. Uh, once you do, you usually you receive quite a bit of support. Um, your question or your issue that you already have might already be asked there. So just in general, a good idea to get involved at the discourse on the Roots website. 
So moving on here, what you're going to see is a general overview of how this structure is laid out. Uh, Trellis being in its own directory and then your bedrock install, which will eventually contain your WordPress application, your WordPress install, as well as all of the independent um, you know, files that you upload, whether it's themes, plugins, etc. Those will be found in their own separate directory. As mentioned previously in the intro video, that's really what Bedrock, um, the main staple of what Bedrock offers is just a little bit more of a traditional workflow within WordPress. So site, just look at this as your WordPress folder. Trellis is everything that we're going to be talking about now. So create a new repository. So simply jumping over to whichever folder you prefer. Uh, we have all of our sites usually within a sites folder on a local machine. Currently on this machine, it's just an empty folder. So what I want to do is just make that directory. So I'm going to go, go ahead and do it M MKDIR. And in this case, I'm going to be creating a, a bit of a sandbox for BreakFix where uh, most of the additional videos will, will take place within this environment. So you can see now I have that BreakFix.space repository. If I click LS or type LS once more, you'll see that that's now empty. The next command that they're asking you to do is actually clone trellis within uh, that folder now. And if I do so, what you're going to see by using that command, it says my public key is denied. What I did simply is I just went up here, clicked on the clone or download, grabbed that URL. And where you saw that previously formatted git at GitHub, let's just go ahead and replace that with the HTTPS URL instead. Hit enter and you'll now see that we have installed Trellis. Next thing we want to do is, again, just follow these steps here and do that same thing once more with Bedrock. Again, we're going to want to replace Bedrock with the HTTPS clone. So I'm going to jump over to, uh, not break, but Bedrock, spelled with no A. Hit enter and just grab that URL once more. Copy that jump over here and do that same thing. Just replace that git URL with the HTTPS URL, which I apparently didn't copy, and hit enter. Now in this directory, you're going to see site and you're going to see Trellis. So we have both of the main components that we need to get this local environment set up. And let's jump back to Trellis here, scroll down. The final step that they're asking you to do is configure your WordPress sites in the group VARS development WordPress sites YAML. So that's a bit of a mouthful. It's a maybe a lot to take in right, right, out, right out of the gate if you're not you know, used to using Trellis. But simply all we want to do is jump over. Let's close these out. This was me debugging previously. And we'll jump into Trellis. And this is where you're going to see all of the Ansible related files, everything from the eventual staging host uh, IP address. So your DigitalOcean server IP address is going to be contained in here. Uh, your deploy hooks that, that tell um, you know, your deployment command, your provision commands to do certain things on the server, to install certain things in certain places. All of that type of data is contained here, but what's also contained here are all of your very specific WordPress directives. And all of those are controlled through these YAML files. And YAML is just a way of formatting your content and your directives to Ansible in a way so that uh, you don't have to write a lot of code and Ansible can easily understand uh, via this indentation format, how to uh, run certain commands that you're telling it to. So in a nutshell, you have three folders mainly that you'll be working with, actually four altogether uh, within this folder. You have your all folder. These contain um, settings that will address every single one of your environments. And those environments include your development environment, your production environment, and then your staging environment. We're going to be just worrying about our local WordPress development environment. So we're going to select that development folder, expand it. Within there, you're going to see a YAML that allows you to address your mail settings, your main settings, PHP settings, vault for uh, security reasons, and then your WordPress site settings. So let's start here. The first thing you're going to see is WordPress sites. It's asking us which WordPress sites we're going to tell it this WordPress site of breakfix.com, but space in this case. Don't ask me why, but that's the domain that we're using. And then site host uh, canonical. We're going to now set up our local development environment. I like to just use whatever the eventual domain is with a .dev following it. We don't need any redirects, and we can talk more about that later in a future video. So we're just going to get rid of that altogether. Local path, our site folder. So as I mentioned previously, that site folder is going to be where our WordPress files are contained. And for now, I'm just going to, just in case I use mail for whatever reason, set up my breakfix.io 
Email address, multi-site, we're not using it, so let's leave that false for now. SSL, we don't need SSL in our local dev, so I'm just going to avoid any potential complications and just leave that set to false as well. And caching in general, uh, usually a local development environment is going to be very, very quick, and I'm going to be the only one using it, or anybody else on the development team uh, is going to be the only one using it, so cache is, is usually not necessary on a local development environment. With all of that being said, we have set up most of our settings literally that easily for our local development environment. The other thing that we want to think about though is our vaults. So this is, you know, what admin password do you want to use, so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and set up breakfix.io once more, actually, sorry, dot space. And we're going to set the admin password. I'm going to jump over to my browser and use my password generator here. Copy that out, jump over here and put into quotes the password because there's some special characters in there. And I want to do that same thing once more. Obviously wanting to make sure that these are always nice and long and variable. Let's put that again in quotes. And let's do it once more. Password and our vault MySQL root password. We're going to swap that out as well. So now we have our local development environment settings. We have the vault set up. PHP should be good to go. Uh, main, I don't think we have to worry too much about this. We're going to keep these settings as is. And then the mail, same thing there. So with all that being said, the only other thing I want to uh, do is jump over to all for now and just go to users. I don't like to, for security reasons, use the admin user. It's probably just not a good idea for best practices. Uh, and this is to log into WordPress. So I'm just going to go ahead and swap this out with break fix as the username, just to add a little bit of extra security um, to, that, um, to that site. So let's jump back over here and see what they tell us to do next. So let's just say that we have configured our WordPress site with all of the directives that we needed to, and then they're saying simply run Vagrant up. So if you jump over here, if you have all of these requirements installed properly, you should be able to run this Vagrant up command, and it should, based on these settings that we just set, based on the Vagrant file within our Trellis folder, you're going to find this file right here, it's going to know how to create that virtual box for you. So that virtual box uh, mechanism or hypervisor, I guess I should say, uh, is going to create those little servers for us within here so that we're not running MAMP, we're not using you know some other third party where we're creating these mini servers uh, within that environment using our local machine, uh, you know, PHP versions, etc. Instead, we're provisioning a new server within VirtualBox to have very, very specific server settings that we can then also use on our staging and production environments. So that creates that perfect parity so that if I'm working on my local dev, if I deploy and provision to that server, I know that my changes are going to work. So you can see right now we don't have any virtual boxes created. So by jumping into now our Trellis folder, we're going to run that simple command of Vagrant up. And this sometimes can take a little bit of time. Uh, it'll run through a little bit of, you know, just checks and balances here, and then I'll ask you to enter your password. So I'm going to skip ahead to that. Okay, so with that password entered, you're going to see that it's going to run through a pretty lengthy process. If this is the first time that you're using VirtualBox, this process could take a decent amount of time, but for right now, it's just running through downloading all the things that it needs to based on the, the directives that are in that Vagrant file. And what it's going to start to do now is run through all of these tasks that are being provided uh, via Trellis and install certain dependencies that are, are required. It's going to set up your PHP version. It's going to do all of those things that you would normally have to do manually. Um, now you can take a huge shortcut and just run this uh, Vagrant up command. It's going to grab all of the those directives and actually install those specific dependencies on your VirtualBox server. You can see in the background there, breakfix.dev, it's currently running. Uh, once this finishes, uh, your breakfix.dev environment should then be live and actually be able to be used as a WordPress development environment. So this process is sometimes, you know, anywhere between five to 10 minutes long. So um, I would say Take a little break, do something that, uh, you know, can just take your mind off things or, you know, maybe learn a little bit more about Vagrant, maybe learn a little bit more about VirtualBox uh, as this process is first happening. Uh, usually it happens, it takes a little while when it first happens. So whether it's your local dev environment that you're provisioning, which is what we're doing, we're provisioning right now, or if it's your staging or production environment that's being provisioned right now, this process can take a little bit of time. So uh, just take a quick break.
Once you have gone through and provisioned your local development environment, you should see a message that looks something like this. If you see some sort of red error, just try to diagnose that, jump over to the roots discourse, see if somebody else has had that problem. Uh, do a quick Google search and you might run into some issues. Um, sometimes if, if the uh, if the actual provisioning is reaching out to a file and that server has some sort of issue, sometimes just doing it once more, um, you know, within an hour or a few minutes even uh, might resolve the issue. But sometimes and a lot of the times it's usually dependent on, on a version of a required Ansible or, you know, Trellis or not Trellis, but Vagrant. Uh, Vagrant BindFS, Vagrant Host Manager, something along these requirements lines. If, if they're not installed with the proper versions or um, they're just not installed at all, you might throw an error. But besides that, it should be a pretty smooth process as long as you're abiding by the correct versions of those requirements. But regardless, uh, we went through that process. It actually only looked like it took, to it took a few minutes there. And now if we jump over to breakfix.dev, there we go. We have a local WordPress development environment.